Hi, um, we are at the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. It's a northern slope and we are sitting on the oldest and the best quality concrete ever. Today I have a special guest who came for the second time to visit the Bosnian Valley of Pyramids. I would like him to introduce himself first and then I'll ask him a couple of questions. Thank you. My name is Salar Kelly. I've been here about eight years ago for the first time. This is my second visit. <clears throat> and even though I have a, a long record of uh, communicating with extraterrestrials and other uh, rather exotic, from the point of view of uh, the mainstream, uh, research, nevertheless, I was skeptic when I came here the first time, skeptical. Um, I saw all of this and I was like maybe 80% convinced this was artificial after hearing the story. Then I actually went to the Pyramid of the Moon and saw a cobblestone street under a meter of topsoil and that was what convinced me. But now that I'm back here, I'm looking in a little bit more depth at what I saw the first time and it's fairly obvious that there's nothing natural about these stones. Uh, to give you my take on what happened here, I think these were built with the help of extraterrestrials about 35,000 years ago or thereabouts uh, from the star system Pleiades. This is the information I received from my own inner guidance. And it's part of an energy network around the planet. There are pyramids in almost every continent, every country even. Uh, and they formed an electrical grid network. Uh, you generate electricity when it comes up th through, the, through the sides of the pyramid into the capstone, and that becomes a focal point of generation of energy. And of course, they were used as navigational beacons and uh, various other things. The pharaohs came many, many, many years later and, and were going to have them as burial grounds although apparently it didn't work out because there were no mummies found in the pyramids. And these ones look very different from the ones in Egypt because of the climate here. It's, it's a wet climate, whereas it hardly ever rains in Egypt, so you're not going to get all this topsoil and, and erosion from water that you get here. Uh, but it's a very powerful place. Um, I did not feel a tremendous surge of energy when I stood on the top of the pyramid, but it has been measured that there is a, a measurable difference there. So they are still generating energy to some degree, um, although I don't think they're fully activated, meaning that the uh, right conditions are present for them to concentrate and generate the energy in a usable way. I think that that could be done in the near future. Sal is the author. He wrote books about different locations, different sites around the planet. In his books, eight years back, when he finished his visit to Bosnian Pyramids, he did mention the Bosnian Pyramids as well. He gave some unique perspective. Do you remember what was in the book about the Bosnian Pyramids? Well, I think it was about the Pleiadians. A lot of people think that, that beings from the Sirius star system uh, were involved in these huge monoliths around the planet. But uh, the, the Sphinx, in my understanding, was made by the Syrians. But the Bosnian pyramids and the Great Pyramid in Giza and many, many others around the world, many that have not been discovered, uh, were built by the Pleiadians as energy generation devices. Uh, the Plea we are descendants of the Pleiadians. Uh, this is the material in my books. Uh, the real history of the Earth states that, that human beings, Homo sapiens, uh, are almost 100 million years old. I, I know that sounds pretty bizarre to mainstream scientists. Uh, I think it was Michael Cremo in Forbidden Archaeology documented Homo sapiens, this DNA, d carbon dated 3 million years ago. He's got a big thick book with, with all the evidence in it. And so human beings have been here far longer than we realize. There's been rising and falling of civilizations, floods. The biblical flood was an actual flood. And, and then the erosion with wind and water. So, it, you know, people thought this was natural for good reason because it's all eroded, you know, and they didn't, they didn't test the hardness and things like that. So, uh, so yeah, human, humans, the history of humans is far different than what we've been told. 
Sal is doing a lot of workshops and lectures Serbia, Croatia, Georgia, other countries in Southern Europe, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, United States and so on. So we are really happy to have him here for less than two days. I'm glad that he came again and he visited the tunnels again. So maybe he can tell us a little bit about the difference, what's been done in the meantime, if he has some new insights after visiting the tunnels last night. Well, I was uh, really uh, um, amazed by the park. I, I, th I thought this, this is a really lovely feature. To, it really enhances the natural energy of the tunnels and to have these labyrinths and, and uh, monuments and, and a little open air temple uh, with the symbols. Uh, it, it just was very uh, remarkable to see. And I'm also very, very glad eight years ago there was rubbish everywhere. It's like people were just using Visico as a, as, a, as a landfill or something and, and now it seems that it's much cleaner everything's been picked up uh, and there are signs you know, showing you how to get around to different places so uh, a tremendous amount has been accomplished here and I want to do uh, thank Dr. Semir for um, all the great work he's done here to, to really beautify this land as well as do the research the research of course is the core issue but then there's the, the making the land more aesthetically beautiful, cleaning up the, the rubbish, and it's just been great. Sal, where do you go from here? Well, I'm going to go back to the United States after a few more days in Croatia, mm. and uh, I'll probably be making a trip to uh, Bulgaria and Romania in October, and I'll go to Mexico a couple of times in between. Sadly. <laughs> Any new book on site? I'm going to do a book on enlightened communities uh, because this is a, a huge issue. It's a very difficult issue. It's a more difficult Sunny. book to, to that's, write that's, that's, that's. than the other books I've written uh, because it takes a lot of research to research different communities. Uh, we are, have a huge problem with our communities today. They're, they're completely dysfunctional. If we live in a city, most of us don't even know our neighbors, or if we just say hi to them and they're busy to jump in their car and go to work. And uh, if you live in the city, all the food has to be shipped in, which is unsustainable, and we're starting to have food supply issues right now in many large cities. So uh, the dog wants to talk. Sunny, Dosta. Sal, I thank you very much for coming. I hope we will see you in the future. Or we will meet somewhere around the planet. Probably will, yes. <laughs> Maybe right. I'll bring, bring a group of people here and we'll do some seminars. Good, good. You will be welcome. Thanks thank a you. lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.